Hi guys, my name's Jim and welcome to Six String Studies. Today we're looking at muting techniques. There's a few different muting techniques that we're going to cover today from par muting to uh, percussive muting and also how to use the left hand when playing through licks and scales, that sort of thing, so that you're uh, delivering a cleanly executed lick. But before we get to the lesson, if this is your first time here, welcome. I would invite you to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss any lessons. You can also check out Six String Studies Book 1 as a free download for you. And if you like that, why not check out Six String Studies Book 2 and 3. So without further ado, let's get to the lesson. Okay, so the first sort of muting we're going to be looking at is palm muting. Sounds like this. Now I'm using a G5 chord here. You can use any chord for this. So I'm playing the third fret on the E string with my first finger. And I'm playing the fifth fret on the A and the D with fingers three and four. All the rest are being muted by the first finger curving over these strings from G downwards. So you're going to have to experiment with that. You don't want it straight like this. You want it slightly curved. And obviously, you've got to have it at least on, otherwise you're going to get this sort of sound. Which you don't want. You've got to bring your first finger so it just gently rests on those strings down from G. So G, B and E. Okay. So the right hand here, we're using the side of the palm here the fleshy bit, and we're just resting it very gently where the strings meet the bridge. So you're going to be slightly on the bridge, not pressing too hard, especially if you've got a floating trim, you're going to get that sort of sound, which you don't want. So you're going to just relax onto those strings and you're coming straight down. You're not curving or using this bit of the arm or, or the hand, I should say. It's this section here and it's going straight down, almost like you're doing some sort of karate chop on it like that okay and then you can come in it will curve slightly as you come in but you're not starting in a, in a bad position okay so we should have this sort of sound so we've still got the depth there okay if we're too far forward we get this clipped sound and if we're too far back we don't get much muting so just where the strings meet the bridge straight down so that everything is muted now when we want to play an open chord a unmuted we just simply lift the hand away slightly so we get but we're not changing the angle or anything let me see if i can show you this a little bit better so i'm going to come straight into the camera here can you see this so just coming off like this okay all right so that's palm muting and that's going to apply even when you're doing kind of licks or anything like that you're just coming away when you want the notes to be unmuted and then just applying the mute when you want the, the mute to happen that's palm muting okay next we're going to talk about percussive muting this is done with the left hand here uh, it's kind of for this sort of sound. So I'm going to play uh, a G5 again, then I'll do some percussive mutes next to it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just straightening out the fingers of the left hand and relaxing the first finger so that everything goes dead. I'm not pressing down at all. I'm just relaxing my fingers on it. And then I'm just strumming. So I've got the chord. That is percussive muting. You see that a lot in funk and that sort of stuff. Finally, when we're playing through um, lick source or we're practicing our scales, this is really important. We need to do first finger muting. Now, if we don't do that, we're gonna get this sound. I'm just gonna go through an A minor pentatonic scale here. This is the noise that's being generated behind it because your first finger is not doing any muting, 
okay? It's, it is mainly first finger, we are gonna be using the right hand as well. So what we do, we play the five and the eight on the uh, E string here. As we go down to the A string, we're fretting the fifth fret here, but look at the first finger here. We're just slightly clipping the string above with the first finger, and we're doing that same curved thing. So we've got the note D being produced there. But everything else is dead. All right, so we have. Now when we get to the next string down, the first finger is still doing the same thing. It's muting the string above and all the strings beneath it. However, it can't obviously mute the E string because it can't can't physically do it. So that's where your right hand comes in and you're just gonna start rolling this mute on here. So we get less than the mute. This is where the right hand comes in, okay? And as you go further down, you're gonna either roll it on like this or you're just gonna drop it down. Up to you, really. we've got the first finger muting the D string and the strings beneath it. The right hand is doing the E and the A string. So by the time we get to the high E there, most of the muting is being done with the right hand but the first finger is still muting the B string. Backwards. It's all coming down to the first finger. You're still muting beneath it and above it, okay? And a good way to test this is to take any note, let's take the seventh fret here on the G string, fret that note, play all six strings, and only that string should sound. Now, if you get this sort of sound, or let's make it a little more subtle than that, you've got this D string being rung. So you've got to find where the noise is coming from and just practice eliminating it. There you go. So there you go, guys. Correct muting on the guitar. So I hope you got something useful out of that. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.